The sports adelics, sports adelics, what is up? And happy Thanksgiving, with exception of the cowgirl fans. I don't know. It started in the first quarter. I was scrolling through Facebook, and already the cowgirl fans had blamed the referees. So it wasn't that the Raiders did anything. It was the refs, because that's just how you all get down. And shout out to Carrie. I mean, I know that this was heartfelt, but I tell you what, I'm getting ready to go all the way in. Meet me over here in the studio. Sportsadelic, Sportsadelics, what is up? What is up? I am Reem, and that's Lil Reem. And please, 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 please subscribe. But also, I need your comments. You know, I want to get into some back and forth. I want to know what you think about the content. I want suggestions from you if it's something that you want me to go in on, because you know I will do it. And speaking of going in on, these two guys right here, number 29 and number 30 for Dallas, need to be cut from the squad, like for real, for real. Number 30 is just bad and terrible and can't cover. And we found out towards the tail end of the game that number 29 is clearly on drugs. I mean, he's just jumping off sides, jumping off sides. I mean, but it's it's Dallas. And as I told you all, of course, it was the referees. But if you know football, if you're watching, looking, paying attention to the game, get away from all of this fanboy, fangirl stuff, and pay attention to the actual game. Dak Prescott, he had a lot of yards. And for all intents and purposes, he played well. But for the most part, he's throwing balls down in the dirt, you know, because he could feel the tension. He could feel the pressure in the pocket. And so he's just grounding, you know, the balls. And that's Dak. You know, he's missing throws. That's Dak. I like to say he's ridiculous. <laughs> but, again, it's the cowgirls. And I think they tried to escape with a win by kicking us off the schedule. You know, Washington. Because what Thanksgiving, the same time last year, we blew them up 40 to 16. And that wasn't the referees. It's like, oh, we didn't have Dak. And I said, hold on, hold on. We won both games. One game you had Dak, and we tapped that ass. And then we re tapped your ass without Dak. I mean, ass tapping is ass tapping. But you had Dak tonight. I don't want to hear all of this trash about, oh, we didn't have C.D. Lamb and we didn't have Amari Cooper. Let me tell you what you did have. You had Gallup and you had Wilson. Gallup had five catches for 106 yards. That, by all accounts, is a good day's work, if you know football. Wilson had seven catches for 104 yards. Good day's work, if you know football. But now, if you know football, rushing, Pollard and Elliott combined for 61 yards in the rushing game. And you know why? Because you got McCarthy over there, and we know what we're going to get from him. Absolutely nothing. Right? That's what he gives. I don't know why Jerry thought that. Well, I know why. He picked him up because he can control him. We all know that Jerry is not bringing in a coach that he can't control and pretty much tell what to do and set his expectations. So that's why you all have McCarthy, and that's why you abandon the run game and think you can just pass your way you know, through the whole game. Everybody knows that knows football. If you establish that line of scrimmage, if you establish your run game, the rest comes easy, except for Dallas. Now, the Raiders did their thing. We don't want to take anything away from them. They did their thing. The referees made bad calls for both teams. 
again, if you're able to watch the game objectively, they made bad calls for both teams. They missed calls for both teams. You can call holding every time on either team. So it's really not about that. But if you're a fangirl, fanboy, you're going to start with all of that whining and crying and blaming the refs. The Raiders came into town, and they put the turkey on the turkey. That's what they did. You know, now here's another thing. One of my old Clemson guys, I know the University of Alabama, I hate this dude. You know, my little Hunter Renfro, you know, little number 13, eight catches, 134 yards. And that had nothing to do with Brown. You know, Brown was just out there for the Cowboys, just raping guys. At some point, Brown, you got to get in position, you know, to make a play on the ball, right? At some point, you got to turn around. At some point, you have to earn your paycheck, which you didn't do that today. I don't know. You might have just been thinking about getting home to that good old food because I know it's probably, you know, some good food, you know, going on at the crib. So he had, um, you know, Thanksgiving on the brain. And then the cowboy killer. Washington had the cowboy killer. Santana Moss, his entire career, I think he averaged 135 yards a game against the Cowboys. And so he got that nickname, the Cowboy Killer. Deshaun Jackson, we know he came in and killed you guys. Three. Uno, dos, tres. Catches for 102 yards. And same thing. Neither team was really tearing it up in the run game, but they ran Jacobs when they needed to, to burn up clock, you know, keep the chains moving. He had you know, strategic runs, you know, just, you know, three, four yards here just to kind of keep the down and distance short, you know, to try to get, you know, their first down, you know, but I am absolutely uh, enjoying, you know, my Thanksgiving. I am stuffed. I put together a pretty nice menu, I think. But again, I want to hear your comments. You know, I want some good banter to go back and forth and check it out. 2022 is coming at you. Lorraine merchandise. You know, so go ahead and send me a message. Let me know that uh, you want a Lorraine since you are a sports adelic. Thank you to all of my subscribers and thank you to my new subscribers. Welcome to the channel. But I got to tell you, mm, the Lions. Chicago game was an excellent game. Went down to the wire, and Chicago went into Detroit and squeaked out a victory. And right now, I think uh, Buffalo, you know, is giving the business to the Saints, but it looked like the Saints' defense is a little nasty tonight. On offense, I don't know what's going on. I know the world of sports is scratching their head, wondering why and how did Taysom Hill get this monstrous, almost $100 million contract. So I expect from this point on for Taysom Hill to give you absolutely nothing. It's been proven. It seemed like when these guys get paid, they just fall apart. And speaking of fall apart after you get paid, isn't that what happened to Ezekiel Elliott? You know, he got his money, and next thing you know, he's shoving people. Uh, you know, he's having wild parties. You know, he's fat and just wilding out, but he's paid, and so you can do that. Uh, Todd Gurley became the highest paid running back in the league. Drove Le'Veon Bell crazy because he wanted to be, you know, the number one paid running back. Excuse me, the highest paid running back. But we know, I mean, I don't even know. It's Gurley's even in the league now. Doesn't matter. He got paid. Very few of these guys, for whatever reason, start to really earn their keep. But once you get that guaranteed money, I guess it really don't matter if you produce. you know. But I think Pollard is going to be the future for the Dallas Cowgirls because Zeke, uh, and he's a running back. He's ran hard. He's a hell of a running back. Excellent in a blocking game. And I think they'll hold on to Zeke one more year. 
to give Paul an opportunity to kind of learn how to become a better blocker, work on his passing, catching out of the backfield, and then Zeke, you know, be out there, you know, you know, being pimped out and just getting on a roster wherever he can. But sometimes a change of scenery will do a guy good. I think that Zeke is, you know, I, I just think his time with the Cowboys and his days are, you know, seemingly numbered. I really do. And if you have the ability to be honest about what's going on with your team, you know that everything that I've told you guys thus far is the truth. I told you all, you're giving up too many points a game. You gave up 36 points tonight. We know what happened, the Broncos game. And you came back, you teased the world because you big, beat big bad Atlanta with the 26 ranked defense in the NFL. And then you couldn't even score a touchdown against Kansas City. And I know some would say, well, Washington lost. You all lost to Kansas City. We did, but we also showed up. We were in the end zone. You know, we ultimately showed up and tried to win the game. But I've been telling you guys all the reasons why you will not win the Super Bowl. I told you that your secondary has a whole lot of problems. Now, Micah Parsons, he's the real deal. He's the truth. I think he's going to be defensive player of the year. Forget rookie player of the year. I think he's going to be the defensive player of the year. You know, I think he's earned it. I mean, he's an outside linebacker, middle linebacker, inside linebacker, defensive end, you know, and he's making plays no matter where they put him on that defensive line. Unlike some of you all, I just get credit where it's due. But again, that's not the problem. The problem is, obviously, 29 and 30, those guys. You know, there are liabilities out there. As a matter of fact, uh, one of my friends asked me, because we were watching the game, he was like, well, why don't they throw him out? Like, why isn't he being benched? Well, because it's Dallas. He's probably the best that they got. Because why would you keep a guy in there that's a liability like that? Because you don't have anybody else to put in. Now, granted, it's true. May have been a different outcome with C.D. Lamb, you know, and uh, Amari Cooper. But let's not forget, the Raiders lost their number one target in Waller. You know, the big tight end slash receiver hybrid big dude. You know, they lost him as well. You know, so with that being said, you know, all the teams – you know, had their issues as far as personnel. But good teams figure out a way to get it done. If you are a Super Bowl contender or if you want people to think that you are, you don't lose the games at home against these 500 and sub-500 teams. You just don't. You just don't. And now you've ruined, you know, your fan base, you know, you've ruined their Thanksgiving. Like right now, every cowgirl fan throughout the world, throughout the nation, you know, some guys probably beating their wives, beating up their girlfriends, who knows. But I tell you what, you heard it here at Sports Adelic, why you're not going to win the Super Bowl. And I know you all want to ride this train with Dak, not in a disrespectful way, but he was a fourth round draft pick for a reason. There's some throws that he still can't make. There's some throws that he's scared to try to make, you know, and then he gets, it, you know, when he gets a little flustered back there, he can't see the field. He's, you know, he stopped looking. And then if you notice, he's still kind of hobbled. Like he, he's really not able to run and be shifty. And that's also a big reason why your offense is a little stagnant. You know, because when you all need him to really break out of the pocket, I just don't think that he's healed to that point yet. Or he might mentally, mentally not be ready, you know, to take that jump. But again, thanks for tuning in. Happy Thanksgiving. I want everybody to stay safe, stay warm, and definitely stay full. And, oh, I do know why Dallas really probably lost. Take a look at their video. 
I think they might have worn out their glutes and their hamstrings and their lower back, you know, before the game started. Yeah. I know, grab you something to drink, something to smoke after seeing that. It's an eyesore. The Shark by Fuentes. Mm. Full body. This is good to the last drop. This is what you want to go in on after you've had a really good meal. I got to tell you. Mm. Mm. As always, be good to yourself.